In this video, I'm going to show you how to use OpenAI to build trading bots. So OpenAI just released their chat GPT-3 and I've been playing around with it for the last couple weeks and it's actually pretty good at coding. So in order to build trading bots, you usually have to code them. But don't worry, you don't have to be like a super genius or anything in order to code, especially now that we have AI to help us out. Now, I wanna go ahead and show you exactly how to use OpenAI to build these trading bots so you can automate your strategy. Now, we'll go ahead and do a simple example in this video just to start out light, but I have much more in-depth trading bots inside of uh, bootcamp I put together. There's a link for that below, but I want to really focus on giving you as much value as possible in this video here. So we're going to go ahead and show you exactly step by step. If you have like a strategy, say it's to buy when it crosses the 20 moving average or sell when the price is going down and crosses the 40 moving average or sell when it bounces up to the VWAP, whatever it might be, I'm sure you have a good strategy in mind. And I just want to be here to encourage you that even if you don't know how to code, you can figure this out because trading is not easy and coding is just another skill just like trading. So what I want to go ahead and do is show you the power of OpenAI and GPT-3 to help you on your coding journey in order to really algorithmic trade and it's gonna be fun so what I'm gonna do here is first try to explain a strategy just a simple strategy that we can build let's say uh, with Python and CCXT build a strategy that buys Bitcoin when the price is over Let's say is over the 20 SMA and then sell Bitcoin sell when the price drops under the the 40 SMA so let's say is over the 20 SMA then hold then hold for five days and then sell when the price is under the 40 SMA. So this is like the 40 SMA, the red right here. It's actually the 41, but close enough. So we want to buy when the price goes above this green line, which is the 20 SMA. And then we want to hold for five days. And then when the price comes under the, the 40 SMA, which we're going to give it five days here to get over it. Once it goes under it, then we will sell. So we'd have to look at the daily. I'm looking at the 15 minute right now. And you can see price recently went over the 20 SMA. But then we give it full, five full days in order to go back under or to go over the 41 SMA. And from there, if it drops back down, we would sell. So that's the strategy and let's see what chat GPT can give us. So let's go ahead and make this a little easier to read. And let's go ahead and see what chat GPT three can do from open AI. So with Python and CCXT build a strategy that buys Bitcoin when the price is over the 20 SMA. And I'm going to just make it a little easier, simple, moving average then hold the bitcoin for a minimum of five days then sell when the price drops under the 40 sma so i'm telling it to use python code with python code with python and ccxt ccxt is essentially how we connect to the exchange then we want to build a strategy that buys Bitcoin when the price is over the 20 SMA. And let's see what how it works. See if it does anything good for me. And I'm going to pull up my code here 
just so I can test it all. I'm gonna import my don't share config. Import don't share config. I'm gonna import CCXT. Oh, it's using Bitfin. Okay, I wanna try this again. You can see it's writing code though. This is amazing. So you can see it actually created the SMA. It checks the SMA 20. Wow, this is amazing. So it goes ahead and says price exchange gets the ticker price here, which is correct. Let's see if we can make this a little bigger for you. Okay, that's a little bigger. You can see it gets the price, retrieve the current price. It calculates the 20 SMA using a rolling window of 20. So it says SMA 20 grabs the rolling window and gets the mean, which is perfect. Now, if the price is over the 20 SMA, it creates the order, exchange create market order. And then we hold for five days. You can use a timer or date comparison. Looks like it didn't build that part. But then it says if price is under the 40 SMA, then we sell. Okay, so I wanna change a couple things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, hey, um, change the above code in order to work with Femex using CCXT, because that is what I wanna do. Let's see if it changes it for us. So import CCXT, import pandas as PD, exchange CCXT.femex, okay. This is great. And then we're gonna test this out. So let's go ahead and pull in some of this code and just test it out with chat GPT and see how this goes. It also looks like it's not building out the timer part. So I'd be interested to see how it would want to implement that. But let's go ahead and test some of this code just to see how powerful it is. Um, I'm pretty amazed because a lot of this will just take, you know, I would say maybe take an hour or something to create by hand and we just did it in like a few seconds. Now, it did miss one part, which is holding for five days. But I think if we work on this with it and keep asking more questions like hey how would i build a function to hold for five days i think we could actually do it so while the first run i wouldn't say it's perfect but we can definitely get some good value out of this let's go ahead and import these two lines so exchange equals ccxt dot femex you know it forgot to put in the keys so i need to add the keys here and let's go ahead and do that just really quickly. So to add my keys, pretty easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy paste from my other one. You can see what it did is it initialized ccxt.femex perfectly, but then it just didn't add this part because it probably doesn't have, well, it obviously doesn't have my API keys. And I just set it up through a don't share config so I don't share it on YouTube. But essentially you could put your keys in like that without this part and your secret in like that as well. And you should be connected to the exchange. So that's pretty good. It was able to look up the documentation for getting the keys. I could probably say what is the function or how can you show me how to connect to CCXT with, can you edit the code? Can you edit the code above in order to use my key and secret to connect to the exchange, to Femex? Let's see if it goes ahead and gives me an example. Certainly to use your API key in secret, you build a constructor and this is how you do it. So import CCXT API, 
okay this is how they're doing it and this is exactly what I did as well as you can see here just made that edit and this is what's cool about it you can keep talking to it and it just made an edit and now it's gonna redo the whole code so as you can see my highlighted part is here and this is exactly what they did now you can't see this part because I had to hide it into another file called don't share config but the thing that I want to do next is like can you write out this part of code you add this part of code that you missed above and then what did it say it said hold for at least five days let's see how smart this is hold for at least certainly here's an example of how you can modify the code to hold the BTC for five days okay look at this and now they import time so I'm gonna import that one as well and this is pretty amazing because it's like talking to a, an engineer right so first time through they're like hey you could do it this way but I actually didn't write the code second time through I asked them to to figure out the key situation and look at this look at my API key like I've done this in the past by hand it goes and looks at the docs and figures out how to do that so this is quite impressive and then look at this right here it went ahead and now updated the ex the the function to say hold for five days so off the top like my first description here it didn't do it perfectly but then after I talked to it a little bit and added some feedback it went ahead and built a pretty solid algorithm now is this an algo that's gonna be profitable probably not but it's a really great example of how chat GPT and open AI you know these are this is pretty amazing as a developer like now I can throw an idea into the open AI and it can kind of like guide me along the way is it perfect well we we're still yet to see if this works but let's just keep on moving here and I think it's saving a lot of time so let's paste that in so as you can see we have all of this set up already import pandas as PD I've already imported time scroll down here because this is more of an updated one let's make sure this is the same let's go ahead and print the SMA print just to kind of test it now this is like the first official test we're seeing if the SMA is correct and this also print let's do an F string here and say this is the symbol current price and then put in the price here and SMA 20 and we'll put in the SMA 20 I feel like this is a pretty solid test because you know especially if you're new to algo trading this would take a little bit of time to figure out you probably have to google it and i think that's one of the best use cases thus far with open ai and chat gpt3 is it it just helps you with googling and it writes out the code for you so you could google and go to stack overflow and figure out all this stuff but now you don't have to do that you just get an idea back like instead of having to like piece together 12 different tabs on Google right and try to figure out which is which and what works best for this scenario now OpenAI allows you to just type in what you need and then it gives you an answer so that's gonna be a game changer in my opinion so let's go ahead and see if this works this is the first test we're giving it using pretty much all the code you know with a couple of tweaks just bringing in my API keys and whatnot using all the code that has been suggested by OpenAI and the first test is can it show us the symbol can it show us the current price and can it show us the SMA 20 you know what let's go ahead and run it 
I could have even said, hey, show me that. Okay, so look at this. It says the symbol does not exist. Femix does not have market symbol BTC USD. So the above, I'm just gonna paste this in, see what happens. And now I'm just, this is just testing with you. Femix does not have the market symbol BTC USD. Please correct that in the above code. Let's see what happens here. I know what the the market symbol is, but let's see if OpenAI does. So the way I look at this is, I don't think immediately it's gonna remove like remove the need for developers like you and I, or maybe just I. And if you're learning this, you eventually. But I think as a developer, this is gonna speed things up a lot and Obviously, I'm just using, showing you the front end right now, which is chat GBT3, but you can use the OpenAI APIs in order to try a bunch of different stuff. Let's see if it has the USDT, because that's essentially what it said. It says, hey, I'm changing the USD to USDT. Let's see if that works. Okay, there we go. So this is BTC USDT. Current price is this. The SMA 20 is this, hmm, maybe because there's not enough data. And that's right, because this just gets the price. So while the code looks pretty good, I don't know, because you can't really get a rolling window of the mean. You can't get a mean off of one price. So let's say instead of just calculating price for one period in the above code, use a pandas data frame to get open, high, low, close volume data. So it's easier to create the SMA 20 and 40. Okay, so look at that. The code looks good, but is it actually good? I don't know. Thus far, like I've had to tell it a couple things. That being said, it does give me some good ideas at least. So certainly to use a pandas data frame to retrieve open, high, low, close volume data from Femix and calculate the 20 and 40 simple moving averages, you can use the following code. So let's go ahead and see if they use the code the way I would do it. The way I would do it is I would get a data frame and fill it up with all the data, right? And instead, they went ahead, the AI went ahead and said, hey, we're just getting the current price, but then you can't make the SMA off of just the current price, right? You need like multiple prices. You need the price for the last 20 periods. And I can already see here, like, okay, this is great that they, they got the last 20 periods but edit the above code to get the last 200 periods of data instead of the last 20 periods. So thus far, it looks like we have to work together, right? So is OpenAI going to make it possible for you to not know how to code? Maybe, but you have to be able to at least know the uh, high levels of coding, right? So like, for example, I knew there that, hey, you can't make a, uh, a SMA because SMA is the rolling average. You can't do that off of one price period. You need at least 20 price periods. So I asked it to do that and it did it. It said, hey, open, high, low, close volume data is here. But it only made it for 20 periods. So I'm just going to say, hey, edit the above code to get the last 200 periods instead of the last 20 periods. And I could probably just do that myself really quickly because it seems like it writes out all of the code over and over again, which mm, is that the best thing to do? I don't know. I, I feel like they're gonna cut me off at some point and not let me use this because I'm, I feel like I'm using a lot of credits, but whatever, I'm gonna run it and see if it changes 
this, all I need this to be changed to is tw 200 instead of 20. Now, uh, because that's like 200 lines of data opposed to 20 lines of data. So my 40 SMA is gonna work much better because right here, it won't get an SMA for the 40 because there's only 20 lines of data. So I'm just gonna have it run again and they'll probably eventually cut me off because this is a lot of different code I'm running. But you know, thus far my analysis is, you know, it's super helpful probably for things that you don't understand. Right now, I, I know how to do this. And look at that, I just got a network error. So it looks like I'm just pushing it too hard. So let's go ahead and regenerate response. Only one message at a time. Please allow any other responses to complete before sending. So maybe, maybe this is the end of my use of chat GPT. I'm gonna hit refresh. Actually, I'm gonna take all this code before I hit refresh just in case because this, this is pretty good code and I can use it. Let's go ahead and now hit refresh. Let's go back here. Regenerate response. Okay, maybe that's all it took. Perfect. I've heard that the cost of running OpenAI and ChatGPT are really mind boggling. That's at least what the founder Sam says. So. I can imagine when I run harder things like this, not just like some, I don't know. I wonder if this takes more credits than, you know, generating like a paper or something. But now it's gonna update it for the 200 periods and I'm gonna run its next test here off of this. Now we know this test right here didn't work because it just got one price instead of open high, low, close volume. Now, that's one thing about this is, if you're not an experienced coder, like it might be tricky because you, you wouldn't realize why didn't this work? Now I've written so many bots and I've taught this so many times that I know that <laughs> it, it wouldn't work because there's only one price and you need 20 total prices to get the mean. But if you're new to this, it might be different. Let's call this exchange since it's doing that. And let's run another test on this after we make these updates. So I'm going to delete these two lines and we'll go ahead and try this out. So let's start here. It says set the symbol and then it gets the open high low close volume data. It looks like it gets the limit of 200 now, which is great. It sets the data frame, which looks awesome to me. I mean, first look, and then it gets the rolling mean. So let's go ahead and pull in all of this here and run it. So retrieve open high low close volume data. That looks good to me. Goes to the exchange, fetches the symbol, the time frame, the limit, and then it converts that data to a pandas data frame. One of my favorite parts of this is that even when it does something wrong, it gives you the English steps, right? So like for the case of initializing the exchange, the first time we did this, it didn't put in my keys, but at least it told me the first step, right? So uh, it's, in my opinion, much better than Google at this point. I'm sure Google has something equally, if not better than this, but at this point, it's like a good way to, it's like a, a pair programmer, somebody to help you out while you're programming, in my opinion. So I'm, I'm liking it a lot and we'll keep testing this out. So we got the open high low data and then we get the mean of the close and then the current price, what is the current price? Well. I guess we don't have the current price anymore. But one other thing I could do is print data frame. And this data frame is going to print out the data frame. So let's put that above this one so we can see that at the bottom. And let's just test it out, see how, how it did. Okay, this is great, I think. Well, it says this is BTC. And this is SMA 20. 
and then non, non, non. Hmm, and an. Print the SMA 20, and it says the SMA 20 is this. Okay, this is better. All right, let's look at the data frame. This is tricky because this shows the last SMA. I only want to see the last and store the SMA, store the SMA 20 in above code, store the SMA, store only the last SMA 20 and SMA 40 most recent, last most recent as a variable to use in the buying decisions instead of a price series. So what's happening here, and this is why I'm asking it to rewrite it, is because the SMA 20 is actually grabbing the whole row of SMA 20s for the last 200. That's why the first 20 are NANs because you can't make an SMA 20 off 20 periods of NAN. So you can see this is like it writes good code, I guess, kind of, but you have to be able to tweak it. So I'm going to keep playing with this because I think there there's definitely something behind this. And if you didn't know how to get the last SMA 20, look at this. I know how to do it, but you can see last SMA 20 now. So if I go ahead and put in this last, and I just type it in here, store the last SMA most recent 20 as a variable. So you just do SMA 20 dot I lock negative one. And then this would be last SMA 20. And if we want to take a look at the data frame as well. I'm going to open this to be a little bigger because you'll be able to see that it did create the pandas data frame here. But I don't see the SMA 20 on the pandas data frame. Interesting. So SMA 20 is DF close of rolling 20. So you can see here and also also add also add the SMA 20 and 40 to the main data frame. So let's run it again. One piece of feedback I would have is instead of having to run all this again, maybe it stores it and it could just spit it out. And when you it spits it out, it just adds the new function, right? Instead of having to go like Dot, 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 like symbol by symbol. It's a little slow and I think it could be better. Now I'm also going to start using, or I'm going to start testing around Copilot a little bit. Now that's based off of OpenAI. I don't know if it's the most updated model, but um, that should be pretty cool. A little AI to help write code as well. Okay, and there you go. So it says add the SMA to the main data frame. And then it adds the other one here as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna copy this. So let's just take all of this right here. And now it's gonna add it to the data frame, which is nice. So is this faster than coding by myself? It depends. Like if you're an amazing coder and you know all of this by heart, maybe not. But if you still don't know everything by heart, which I certainly don't remember everything by heart. Well, it could be good. So I'm going to paste this in. Calculate the SMA 20 on a rolling window of 20. Okay, it got that from the data frame. And it's a DF close. And then it made the last SMA 20, the I lock function in pandas, the last, the, the last row. And then it created the column which it pretty much had, but it was hidden. Now it's here. I don't think that's gonna work though. I think it needs brackets around it. Um, and then it gets the SMA 
40 close rolling mean, which looks good. And then it gets the last SMA 40, and then it creates the pandas data frame uh, as well. But I think it needs brackets around it, but we'll see. So while this is pretty dope, you know, it does need a human oversight still. So <laughs> if you're worried that uh, OpenAI is going to take development jobs right away, I don't think that's true. But hey, you know, next version, you know, in the future, I think it will be able to code much, much better. And it's going to take developers like you and I to uh, tweak this and we can build on top of it. Right. So I'm already building some stuff and to make this a, a more improved model. And I'll make sure that everybody inside of the boot camp gets access to anything that comes out. Essentially, I'm just trying to make that like the family of algo traders here. Um, as you know, I just, I just, I record what I need to build in the day. So I'm typically not just making YouTube videos. I just record what I need to actually create that day. And I need to get better with uh, OpenAI and see where the holes are because we're building something that will allow OpenAI to be even better and really be able to code with you or for you. So that's pretty exciting. So my guess here is it's not going to print out the DF because this is going to be an error, but maybe not. Okay, so it didn't. That was not an error. I've just had that happen a few times. That's awesome that it's working. So 16.824 is the last SMA 40, which is awesome. And SMA 20 is the last, last one. So it looks like it's doing well now. So with a little intervention, I think this can code pretty well. Let's go ahead and um, I guess continue. Mm, that rebuilt. I should have said keep going. Okay, maybe I'll just rebuild it all the way this time. But I think we have the code up here. Um, no, I'm going to let it run it out. And then what we'll do is I'll hit continue. I'll say continue. Keep writing that code. Because we have gotten the SMAs correctly. We've gotten the last ones. We've got the 40 and the 20. And then remember our rule for building this. And I should write this somewhere so we can all see it. This is what we're building. With Python and CCXC, build a strategy that buys Bitcoin. I should have said and Femex. Build a strategy that buys Bitcoin when the price is over the 20 SMA, then hold for five days, then sell when the price drops under the 40 SMA. Now, I know it might not go over the 40 SMA, but we're giving it five days to do so. And I'll just say keep going because you can see it stopped here. And that's a little weird thing. I don't know why it does that. Maybe it's just trying to conserve credits or something. Here is the, so it says certainly here is the rest of the modified code that uses the last most recent 20 and 40 SMAs to make a decision about whether to buy or sell Bitcoin. So you'll need to define the amount of BTC to buy and the price at which to buy it. At. OK, so we did exchange our create order symbol market buy amount DF close dot I lock one. So we're buying at the last close, it looks like. Interesting. I guess I didn't instruct us to do anything else. So this is kind of cool, right? Because even when I don't instruct it to do stuff, it probably uses all of the data on the internet to, to decide what is the best. I'm not quite sure how the model was trained, but you know, this is a pretty, pretty solid, solid way to do things. So Let's go ahead and say I think this is the next part right here. So let's copy that. And then we need to copy this as well. Amount. We don't have the amount. I'll make this so you can see it better. Amount. 
So we need to pick the amount. Let's just do one for now. Put that up here equals one. Okay. And then this start time Hmm. Hold the BTC for five days. I'm trying to figure out how does this line up. So it says hold the BTC for five days. Okay. I don't know where we want this though. I'd say that's a little bit confusing. Because if it's if the close is bigger than the last SMA, then we're gonna buy. Okay, I see how it goes. And then after it buys, it holds for five days. So it's just gonna go in a holding pattern for five days and just loop. That's an interesting way to do this, but I guess it works. And then after the five days, it checks again. And what's it check? Well, so we go through this while loop and it's just going to keep sleeping for a minute. And then if the close is now under the 40 SMA, I feel like this needs to be shifted over like that. Not this though. And then boom. This right here is the algorithm. I'm pretty sure. I mean, essentially it says if the close, the current close is bigger than the last SMA, 20, create a buy order. It's gonna do market buy order. I would change that. I usually do limit orders, but it's cool to see that it wrote all this code. And then after it creates, creates the order, since it's a market order, it knows it's in automatically. And then it says start time. This is the start time. And then while start time, time dot time, while current time, so time dot time is now, minus start time is under, I'm assuming this is five days, sleep for a minute. So it just loops, loops, loops <laughs> until it's that and then if if the close is under the 40 SMA, then it will create an order to sell it. Now, I would say we only want to do this. Alter the above code. Alter the above code in order to only enter a position if we are not already in a position. Otherwise, otherwise, do not enter another position. So I just like to explain it like there are five. Um, do not op enter another position. So only have one open position at a time. Sometimes I reiterate it. Um, <laughs> let's see how it does because right now essentially if I had this all loop then it would go ahead and continue to open new orders so while OpenAI is pretty smart and can write code you have to be very very specific and kind of know what to look for so if you don't know how to code yet I would recommend just learning because it's not that hard I didn't go to school for it I didn't Go to any boot camps or anything like that. I just learned on the internet and now I'm just coding every single day, new algos, new tweaks to my algos. And I try to put all the code inside the boot camp and that's all accessed below. And then in Discord as well. So um, you get access to the Discord, which is pretty neat as well. But 2023 is gonna be the year of machine learning and AI uh, for algo trading for the crew that's, that's with me. So. Um, I don't know how long I will be sharing this information and sharing my tweaks that are on top of OpenAI. Uh, this is just kind of a sample, right? Because this is what 
this is what OpenAI has launched with ChatGPT3, but I think this is just a start because it clearly needs some tweaking and I'm working on tweaking this model to, to make it work much, much better. So if DF close, if not in position, if DF close, market buy, I think we gotta say keep going. Okay, I like this implementation better, keep going. Here's the rest of the code. So this one looks better because it says if DF close is bigger than this, and then if not in position, and it says in position equals false, but how does it get the in position? So I'm gonna say in the above code, in the above code, check to see if in the above code have the have the in position variable check the exchange to see if we are already in a position so this is pretty like interesting right because it looks like really good code and if you don't know how to code it's like oh my god it just built me a, a bot instantly and like if you just even like as a coder i look over this i'm like holy smokes this built a perfect trading bot for me but in reality look at this we've had to tweak it multiple times it says in position equals false but then how does it determine if we're in position it sets a flag to in position as false but I don't think that, you know, that's not the way to do it. You have to check to actually see if there is a position. So now I'm telling it to, to fetch balance. That's pretty much, I didn't say that, which is cool. I said, check to see if there's in position and set that as a variable. And now it says fetch balance. We'll do that. That's awesome. But it took a little bit of um, intuition or knowledge from my side and in order to kind of tweak it. So. I've seen a lot of Twitter posts and whatnot, like, oh my God, OpenAI can code for you. And I think it can to an extent. It can help you code, give you ideas, but you got to work with it. Like it's the way I look at it, it's like a super expert coder, but also a junior coder at the same time. So it's like expert as it knows everything and it can find anything, but it's almost junior in decision making of like, how do I figure this out? So, but with some like, some massaging, it can do it. So you can see now it's creating a balance, BTC free. And is that the way to do it? Then if open position is true, check to see if you have a non-zero balance I'm gonna say keep going because it looks like it cuts it off. What I love about this though is you can see the holes really easily. And OpenAI is pretty, it's OpenAI. Like we can use the APIs in order to build on top of what they've built thus far to make this something that you can just put in a strategy and it actually spits out the entire code. And I think it just needs to be trained a little more with more algorithms. So, you know, I'm working on that and that's gonna be pretty interesting. Like I said, I'll, I'll make sure that everybody knows when that is released. Um, and it's in the Discord and the bootcamp, all that good stuff. There's links for all that below. So the code use the, We'll use the fetch balance method of the CCXT library to retrieve your account balance and check if you have a non-zero balance of Bitcoin. If you do, it will set the imposition flag to true, indicating that you are currently in position. If the current price is above the 20 SMA and you are not currently in position, 
it will buy Bitcoin and hold it for at least five days. If the price then drops below the 40 SMA, it will sell the BTC and set the in position flag to false. It says, keep in mind, this is just a basic example. And I agree with that. You know, it, it takes a little bit of looking through here. So let's go ahead and implement this one instead. Check to see if current price is low. SMA. And you can see here, it kind of just like gives up on this line here. That's funny. I'm going to take this though in position from here all the way down to here. And I'm going to delete this part here, delete, add, and now let's look at it. So balance equals fetch balance. Okay. Exchange that fetch balance. And if balance BTC free, that means that there is BTC that we have on our account. If it's over zero, that means we're in position. So this looks way better. So in position equals true. So it sets that to in position is true, but initially it says it to false just to initialize a variable. And this is where I think a lot of the learning comes in for me, at least is it, it gives us the, what it actually is trying to do. And then, you know, with, your own skills, you can tweak it or ask it to change a little bit for you, which is super nice because um, if you are learning, at least it gives you a skeleton, right? But as you can see throughout this video, it's not quite perfect. And I've spent some time trying to build this and I would say it probably saves, saves some time at this point, but as I've mentioned multiple times before, like I still think you need to know how to code uh, right now. My goal is to build something that allows you to just put in the strategy like I did above, and then it spits out a perfect, a perfect set of code. Now that's, that's pretty ambitious project that, that I am working on. So that should be, you know, probably here this year, or well, I guess it's the end of this year, 2023. And like I mentioned, I, I just, I like to code with you and show you what I'm doing each day, show you where my mind's going, because I don't know everything. And if one word or idea helps you think of something that changes the game forever when it comes to algo trading, that's so worth it to me because I'm still getting work done. I'm just working with you. And if you do appreciate that, just let me know below, you know, or or hit the like button that always just signals to me that hey just keep building on on youtube instead of coding by yourself because either way i'm spending multiple hours a day building new algorithms or updating my old ones and this is some interesting technology that i just really wanted to share with you i'm sure you've seen it already all over youtube or twitter but <clears throat> there are some holes to it and I just want to make those holes pretty apparent because you've watched me build algorithms by hand if you've been around on the channel for a while now. And now you can see me using chat GBT and see that it's not quite perfect yet. Um, in an ideal world, it would be able to just write the exact code for me. Maybe it's my fault though. I didn't give it good enough instructions. Maybe if you want me to make another video of giving it even better instructions to see if it can spit it out uh, perfectly. I've already started working on some templates that have helped improve this. So like template instructions, right? Of how exactly to put in your, your trading strategy so it gets even closer. It's not 100% yet, but like I said, I'm, I'm constantly researching and trying to build on top of OpenAI. And my guess is that Google has something probably even better up their sleeves. Um, I read a quick fact the other day that Facebook and Google have like 80% of the market when it comes to machine learning engineers and PhDs. So that's what's going to move this industry forward. Um, not necessarily that you need a PhD by any means to do this, but if they're just hiring everybody up, there's got to be a, a few really smart people in that group. So that's going to be interesting. I just want to be ahead of the, the game though. 
uh, with all this machine learning AI stuff, you know, as OpenAI and other companies release their models, you can always build on top of the model. So in the dream world, and it will come true someday for, for me, is I'm going to be able to put in text just like I showed you here, but instead of having to tweak all these things, it's going to spit out a perfect trading strategy that works without any edits. And that's where I'm going. So if you want to be part of the crew, you know, jump in the Discord. There's a link for the, the camp below. I show you absolutely everything I know about training algorithms and how to code them. So you can either code them by yourself or code them with ChatGBT because you can see it does help me do some things. And, and it's especially nice for things you do not know how to do. Like for, I kind of know how to build this bot. I've built it multiple times on this channel. But you can see it at least writes the code for me. It takes some time. And for things I don't know how to do, I would have to Google it. So I can make some more videos on OpenAI and ChatGPT. Um, it's pretty interesting to me. Let's go ahead and try to finish this up though. So I just pasted in all this and it says, now it actually gets us a real in position. And it says it's the true if df close dot i lock negative one over the sma if not it, then it would go ahead and start to consider to enter but then it would say if it is and you are currently not in position then buy some btc you will need to define the amount of btc to buy and the price at which to buy it at okay so symbol market we're doing a market order so there is no price we need to buy it at i wonder what this is so create order, amount, price, params. It's interesting because it, it has it set as a market order, but then it also passes in a price. So is that gonna work? I don't know. I don't know about that. I'll have to test that one. But then it sets in the position the true, which is correct because it did a market order. So you automatically get in the position. And now it's gonna hold for five days. So start time, time out of time. And then it says while time out of time, time dot time is minus start time is less than five days. It's just gonna continuously loop for 60, 60 seconds, which is one minute. And that's pretty cool. I mean, for me, that's a different way than I would implement it. So that's one of the huge powers of OpenAI and using chat GBT in trading because it makes you look at things differently. Just like I hope these videos help you come up with different ideas for your brilliant ideas you already have because I have a different perspective than you do and you have a different perspective than me. Chat GBT is like a third person or even more like, you know, it has more knowledge than both of us combined. It's just about being able to ask the right questions. The same thing for Google, right? Google has all way more knowledge than you and I combined, but it's hard to ask the right question. And if you ask the right question, the information is going to be there. But with Google, you have to sift through all of these results. And with OpenAI, at least it just gives you an answer and you can always be like, hey, I want a different one. So this is a pretty cool way to implement that. It's just gonna make the order, it's gonna be a market order, and then it's gonna sit for five days. And then it's gonna check if the data data frame close, I lock negative one, is, which is pretty much the price, is less than the last SMA 40, then it creates a sell order. So what I would need to do in order to actually get this functional is, I would have to call this a bot. So like say def bot like this. And as you can see, like this is another thing that, you know, I, I also got really excited when I saw it write code, but without being able to know how, without knowing how to code, it's, it's gonna take some change, tweaks and changes. So like, you're gonna you're kinda gonna need to know at least the basis of how to code. Now, this is weird that this didn't get pushed with it, but 
So if this needs to be sent over as well, it's weird how when you indent, it doesn't always indent correctly. And that's like, for me, when I was first getting started, indentation was tricky as well. So, you know, my overall summary of this is essentially ChatGPT is like a an expert noob coder. Expert as it has all the information needed, but it's also a noob uh, in the fact that you have to like really massage it and to get the right answers. And so now I put it into a function and now I can say, hey, let's loop this function forever. And that will allow me to run this bot 24 seven, 365. So how do I loop forever? Well, let's go ahead here and say loop bot forever. And that should be fine because remember when we enter it just chills for five days. You know, if you have this up on a server or a computer, it's just chilling for five days after it enters and then it's going to check this. So loop bot forever. We have to hit schedule dot every, let's just do 15 seconds and dot seconds dot do and bot. And then we have to import schedule, import schedule. And I might want to import that at the top, but then we'll say while true. We want to try schedule and we put a try block there just in case like internet goes out or something. I don't want to have to rerun this because for example, if the internet goes out or your something happens, I can just say print. Maybe internet problem air sleeping 30 and re trying. So I'll copy and paste that a few times. I want to go ahead and see if I can get this to run, but I'm not going to spend too much more time debugging it. You can see that if I run this every 15 seconds, let's just run it one for one second now. And let's go ahead and go to my Femax. Well, let's see if it runs first. Femax contract. Let's go to BTC. Oh, it looks like my market maker is in there already. So it's interesting to up a little bit. I don't really want to run it on my account because I have another bot running, but you know, this is, this is interesting. I think it's going to work, but as you saw, I had to massage it quite a bit. So if you want me to do a part two and build more in depth bots using chat GBT, uh, please do let me know. Open an eye seems to be pretty neat. Um, but I think this concludes the how to use OpenAI to build trading bots using chat GBT3. Pretty awesome software. Um, but like I mentioned, you got to massage it a bit. And I'm going to keep training uh, on top of their model, uh, which is the OpenAI Codex model. And hopefully we can get to the point where you can just put in this and it outputs a perfect version of this instead of having to uh, play around with it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video or inside of the bootcamp where I give you all my code, all my strategies and all that good stuff. So see you there.